Hello fellows, Mr. Creepy Creeps here. If you are new here, you can subscribe our channel. We upload daily horror videos. When I was a kid, I loved catching bugs. I'd catch them in jars, butterfly nets, and sometimes with my bare hands. I'd watch spiders spin webs between my fingers. I was never bothered by buzzing wasps or bees circling my lunch. I'd never been stung, and I never felt threatened. Maybe I was just a stupid kid, but I figured that live and let live was the only way to be. I was eight years old when my family went on a trip, first to my aunt, then on to my grandmother. My aunt lived in this rural Minnesota town in the middle of nowhere. We were just staying for a couple of days before continuing east. When we got there, we'd been driving for six hours straight. I'd been carsick the entire time and hadn't been able to eat or drink a thing. It was the hottest week of the summer, leaving me dehydrated and exhausted. And of course, my parents were fighting about it. They were fighting from the moment they stepped out of the car. I tuned it out. I could tell from the sound of their voices it was going to be a long one. The kid says he's fine, so he's fine, my dad complained. I told you we should have stopped for a milkshake, mom groaned. He's gonna be sick all night. And you think putting dairy in him is gonna fix that? Come on. So we're just gonna let him suffer, is that it? Is that your solution? Yes, of course, yes, I love making him suffer. That's the best thing, I love it so much. It kept going back and forth. I picked up my backpack and unfolded a couple of Spider-Man comics that I'd read at least eight times over. I wandered off to get away from the car and the noise, watching my aunt coming out of the house to de-escalate. I plopped down on a rock in the backyard, letting my stomach settle. I'd always hated cars, and being stuck in one on a hot summer's day for six hours, it was torture. As the sounds of nature washed over me, I started to feel like a person again. A breeze in the wind, a faint flutter of birds. They sang different songs out there. Diving back into the adventures of Miles Morales, I heard the familiar buzz of an insect. Looking up, I saw something I'd never seen before. Now, this was a long time ago, but I'll never forget it. It looked like a wasp, but had much more prominent antennae and a bigger abdomen. And the color. It wasn't yellow. It was a bright red. It had landed on one of my aunt's blue garden sunflowers, making the colors clash. I'd never seen an insect like it before. Looking back at my parents' car, I knew I had a jar or two hidden away there for just such an occasion. I was going to catch it. Then again, I didn't want to risk losing sight of this thing. So I did what I'd always done when I saw something I wanted to catch. I used my hands. I approached inch by inch, cupping my hands. The thing just sat there, head turned sideways to look at me. It didn't move. Not even a twitch. I slowly closed my hands around it, plucking the top of the flower as I did. I stood up and walked back to the car, putting one careful foot in front of the other. Dad had gone inside to make a sandwich while my mom and aunt stayed by the car, now having a sort of second-hand argument. What kind of person refuses their child a bottle of water? Mom scoffed. What kind of person is that? I tried to get her attention, but she was in full rant mode. My aunt, ever the diplomat, tried to calm her down. To no avail, of course. Mom, I repeated. Can you get the jar from the trunk? It's a bottled water, she continued. It barely costs... The price of the bottle. Is his time so valuable that it, 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 it overpowers ours? That it consumes the time of those around him? Mom. Then a burn. Ice pushing through my skin, digging into the vein of my arm. Like my own pulse was working against me, to wound me. I dropped the flower, screeching like a wounded animal. All of a sudden the fight was over. Dad ran out. Mom scooped me up in her arms. They brushed my hair, kissed my forehead, and assured me how everything was going to be okay as I bawled my eyes out. And the red wasp thing? 
it was just gone. According to my aunt, all I'd had in my hand was that flower. I got a bad reaction to it. I was sweating, and it felt like my ears had this filter to them, as if the world was hidden behind a glass bubble. I could hear my parents arguing again. My dad wanted to take me to the hospital, while my mom argued that calling an ambulance would be faster. Meanwhile, my aunt was getting me some of her allergy medication, basic antihistamines. I must have collapsed. I woke up to an unknown man shining a flashlight in my eyes, a paramedic. He asked me to follow the light with my eyes. I did, but the moment I tried to move my head, I got this ache in my neck. Looks like a bad reaction, he said, but he's all there. We could bring him in, but I think some rest and ice cream ought to do it. You sure? My mom chimed in. No sign of infection, just a bit of redness, the man said as he turned my hand around. It's your call, but yeah, he'll be fine. Neither of my parents were convinced, but they couldn't decide on what to do, so they just went with his recommendation. My aunt tucked me in right there on the couch, putting on an X-Men movie for me to watch in the background. They spoiled me with ice cream, and did me the courtesy of keeping their arguments short and hushed. Later that night, the house was silent. Whatever had gone through me had passed, and I was left wide awake in a sleeping house. My aunt slept on a futon down the hall, while my parents stayed in her bedroom. I tried to work the remote to put the movie back on, on mute, but I couldn't get it to work. So once again, I resorted to reading my comics. I counted the seconds, hearing the tick-tocking of a clock from the kitchen. There was some light coming in from a large window to my left. It wasn't a great view or anything, just flat farmland for as far as the eye could see. I settled in for a long and boring night, hoping I could fall back asleep sooner rather than later. But as I read, there was a dark splotch on the page, a shadow coming from the window. Looking up, I could see one of those red wasps outside the window. I got up and walked over to it. Even then, I didn't feel threatened by it. The pane of glass between us helped. I tapped at it with my finger and it didn't move. I shifted my finger a little to the left and tapped again, and it followed. Tapping a little all over, it seemed to follow wherever my finger moved. I did a couple of zigzags just for fun and made it do a little jig. I couldn't help but to smile. It looked funny. You didn't want to hurt me, huh? I whispered. Right? I could feel a warmth in my arm, a reminder of the sting, but also a sort of reassurance. That sting was as bad as it would get. A part of me felt that if it were to happen again, it wouldn't be nowhere as bad. You wouldn't, I concluded. You're a good guy. I spun my finger in a circle and the red insect followed suit. What a funny little guy. We decided to stay an extra day to give me some time to recover. Dad didn't mind. Any excuse to spend less time with his mother-in-law was a blessing. My mom and aunt spent some time at a nearby flea market while dad and I watched scary movies that I promised not to tell mom about. We just finished Jaws when dad had to go make a call for work. As I wrapped a blanket around me, one of those red wasps crawled up my leg. At first I was a bit startled, but it just kinda sat there, antennae poking around like little feelers. Sorry, I whispered, didn't see you there. It crawled across my leg and up my arm, ending up on my thumb, facing my index finger. It seemed to follow my finger as I wiggled it, like a cat staring down a toy. I played with it for a couple of minutes. As I did, I noticed a couple of shadows cast on the coffee table next to me. Looking up, I could see about a dozen more red insects on the window. Every single one of them, moving with the twitch of my index finger. You understand, don't you? I whispered under my breath. You get it. And while they couldn't speak, I knew I was right. As our time at my aunt's place came to an end, our trip resumed. 
My aunt was coming along, so I had to share the back seat. Dad was back behind the wheel, and my mom was the ever-loyal co-pilot, armed with an ever-present armada of suggestions. My aunt had brought this thick book of word search puzzles for us to play with. I was dreading it. I didn't want to get carsick again. I tried my best to prepare, but there was just no right way to do it. If I ate something, I would feel like a shaken soda bottle all day long. If I didn't, I'd feel like I had a knife rattling in my empty stomach. There was just no way to win. My mom always urged me to try some home remedy kind of thing, but it never worked. No yogurt, no chewing gum, no warm soup. Nothing worked. But that day, as we went on our way, I was fine. There was this warm, tranquil heat spreading throughout my body that just, it calmed me. No matter how much the car shook or how powerful the glare of the sun stung my eyes, it's as if a shield had passed over me. I was fine, this was fine. I'd see the red wasps every now and then throughout the day, a couple of them on a fence at a rest stop, one of them resting by my foot in the car, a couple more crawling across the sunroof. I rarely had to look for long before I'd spot one or two, and they didn't seem to bother anyone. Maybe I was the only one who noticed them. I'd play a little with them, making them follow my finger around, or fly in a circle. It's as if there was a sort of quiet understanding between us, and without the constant car sickness, I was in a better mood than usual. It seemed to spread to everyone in the car. Hell, even my parents stopped arguing, if only for a bit. I was leaning my head against the window, watching the sun slowly set. We weren't far away from our destination. We'd stopped for dinner at McDonald's earlier, so this was the home stretch. A single red wasp was stuck to the window, tapping its antennae to match the rhythm of my finger. I was trying to blink away a creeping tiredness, not really paying attention. As we slowed down for a four-way stop, something jolted me awake. A feeling, asking me to take a closer look out the window. A car going down the left lane, about to pass a red light, crashing right into us. I called out to my dad who stepped on the brakes. We managed to turn just as the car passed us at 75 miles per hour, inches from our bumper. Looking down at my feet, one of the red wasps curled around the tip of my shoe. They had done this. They'd helped me. They really were my little friends. We arrived at my grandmother's place, but for the next few days, I was busy exploring my strange and sudden friendship with my newfound companions. They seemed to have followed me. I'd see them swarming outside the window where I slept, or around my dirty clothes or my shoes. Sometimes one would land on me and just... hang out. I made a little game out of having one of them zigzag between my fingers, like a coin trick. It was magical. I felt like a superhero, and if I just slowed down for a bit, I could almost hear them. Not with words, but intention. They'd point out interesting things. They'd warn me of danger. Hell, if I wanted to, I could direct them to attack. I could, but I wouldn't. But in my heart of hearts, by God, I knew I could. It'd be so easy. And somehow, no one seemed to notice almost as if they kept out of sight for everyone else. It all came to a point when I was out walking with my mom. She was a smoker, but my grandmother refused to allow smoking anywhere near her house, so mom had to step away. She took this time to bring me along for a walk along the beach. It became a little ritual. As we passed by a patch of high grass, I got that feeling again. Not as a warning this time, but an invitation. Mom was busy with her cigarette, so I stepped away to look out over the grass. It didn't take me long to spot them, dozens of little red dots coming my way. Within seconds, they were swarming me. It was a bit startling, but harmless. They danced around me, crawling across me in patterned lines, a harmonious buzzing resonating with the warmth spreading from my arm. I went deeper into the grass, feeling more and more of them congregate around me. They wanted me to go further, 
away from mom and all the others. We could go have fun. They'd take care of me, they promised. And I believed them. There was a scream, somewhere off in the distance. Something covered my face. The gentle buzzing turned into a raging, chaotic, noise storm. I was grabbed and dragged and it sounded like my mom was getting stung. She was screaming for my dad. Her screams turned to wheezing coughs and I didn't see a thing. I was lifted off the ground as I lost all control. More people screaming, fabric being waved around. I could feel the buzzing growing frustrated and panicked, trying to reach for me. Then, a door slammed. I was in a bathroom. I could hear my grandmother desperately caring for my mom just outside, as my aunt called the emergency services. I was stuck in the bathroom with my dad, who was brushing my arms and taking off my shirt. I didn't understand what was going on. He said something about getting ointment as he threw open the door and hurried into the kitchen. For a moment, it was just me. I looked in the mirror. At first, I didn't recognize myself. It didn't look like me. My skin had taken on a reddish tint. I had insect bites all over and swelling mounds all over my arms and neck. But looking down, it didn't hurt. I hadn't even noticed. It seemed that I was the only one who wasn't in a complete panic. They'd stung me. They'd been stinging me this whole time and I hadn't felt a thing. I Standing there, looking into the mirror, I could feel them. They wanted me to go back outside. They demanded it. They were so desperate for me to come back to them that they would do anything to make that happen. I started to realize just how bad things were about to get. They weren't going to stop. Never. My dad came back in with a blanket soaked in cold water, which he wrapped around me. He also had a kind of eucalyptus ointment that he smeared across my neck. My mom was groaning in the other room, clearly in pain. Before I had the chance to ask, my dad said, She's gonna be okay, we gotta focus on you. I nodded. As I did, I could hear my aunt yelling. Before I realized what she was saying, my dad closed the bathroom door and tried to cover the cracks with towels. I could hear little buzzing taps against the door. I could feel how desperate they were, how angry they were. If I wasn't coming out, they'd hurt people, all these people, and, and then me. There was no way to explain or rationalize it. I tried to find words, but they were drowned out in panicked yelling. I tried to focus, but it felt like my head was crackling with impressions. I hadn't even noticed how my dad had poured me a bath. I got in without questioning it. I was sure he had his reasons. Looking back at it, I think it was a way for him to make sure I was safe from the wasps. But in that moment, I didn't know what to think. Besides, thinking had started to hurt. Stay here, he gasped. I'm gonna help your mom. And with that, he was out the door. I was safe, for now. I leaned back, letting my ears dip below the surface of the water. Even then, I could hear my pulse and the buzzing of wings. As I closed my eyes and focused, that feeling in my bones became clearer. Finally, there were words. Come out. Come to us. Leave. Run. Be free. As clear as day, I'd feel thumps of pain across my body as I imagined myself as one of the wasps slamming into the door. I'd feel their rage as they attacked. I'd feel my limbs being torn as they were swatted away. I'd twist and turn in my bath as I imagined myself being crushed, biting, stinging, raging against whatever I could to attack, to kill, to reach. Years later, my father would describe to me what he'd seen. From his point of view, he'd seen me having a seizure in the bath, trying to stab at him with an invisible knife, all the while repeating, out, out, out. What happened next is unclear to me. A lot of it was told to me afterwards by my parents, but in the moment, I was out of it. The ambulance couldn't get to us, so they had to drive me to the hospital. Dad rolled me up in a bathrobe, hurried out to the car and got me in the back seat. 
My mom had been stung about a dozen times, but it wasn't life-threatening. Still, she needed to get checked out as well. That ride to the hospital could have gone either way. All I remember is blinking in and out of consciousness. The strangest little details, like the feel of the car seat texture rubbing against my legs, the smell of cigarettes on my mom's breath, my aunt's hairspray and the color of my grandmother's painted nails, all of it mixed with sparks of something else, my head getting crushed against the windshield, the pain in my limbs as I tried to hang on to the side of the car. Things that obviously weren't happening, but in a way, they were. I was experiencing some other strange symptoms. I was sweating something that can best be described as a mild adhesive. My eyes were swelling, pressing against my skull. My tongue had turned a sudden white, and my veins were so discolored you could see the blood pump through them. I don't remember being admitted to the hospital. I don't remember being put on a ventilator or being given allergy shots. And still, just like that night at my aunt's house, I woke up somewhere in the middle of the night. I remember a terrible ache and an itch in my eyes. It was a dark room where my mom and dad were huddled up in the corner. They were out cold, probably exhausted from the whole ordeal. But there was someone else in the room too, not my aunt or grandmother. The large thing, the other, it was standing by the door. The warmth I'd felt was almost gone, but what little I had left in me had a direct connection to it. A thread, connecting it, to me. It looked like a person in a sort of coat, but I knew it wasn't. It was pretending. This was not human. In the brief glimpses of understanding that we shared, I saw fields of maggots raising an entire countryside, laying waste to corn, cotton, rye, wheat, everything and anything. Creatures growing in meat, like seeds in the soil, lines of hundreds of people baking in the sun, ready to burst with ravenous life. Screams in the night, stopping suddenly, as a sickeningly sweet smell filled my senses. The thing came closer. It was asking me to accept. It was a threat, a promise, and an expression of adoration, all at once. We could be friends, best friends. It had been like me. Before I even knew what to think, it was all silent. What little warmth I'd had left in me was gone. Two pale orbs reflected the blinking lights from the machine that kept me breathing, as unconsciousness took me away. A final thought. Sadness. It took me months to recover. I had strange allergic reactions to seemingly random things for weeks on end. One day it'd be peanuts, the next day it'd be peaches, or common soap. I'd get rashes. Parts of my hair would fall out. They'd have to extract these inch-long stingers from my arms and slather me with disinfectant. But over time, it all went away. I think the only thing that stuck around was an allergy that my mom contracted to tobacco smoke. Or maybe she just began associating smoking with the most stressful day of her life. Either way, she quit cold turkey. I've always admired that, my dad does too. Now it's been over two decades since that summer. Looking back at it, it all seems like this distant other world. Something that happened to someone else. It has been hard to convince myself that it was actually real. But a couple of weeks ago, I was in an accident. A cable at work snapped, whipping straight across the workshop, smacking against a shelf. As it whipped back, it struck me across the left arm, leaving an inch-deep gash in my arm. And I swear to whatever gods may be, a little red wasp crawled out. The same first one that had stung me on that warm summer's day, over 20 years ago.